everybody, Treasure Bone here. Hey, I was looking at the news today and I saw an article about Oak Island. They are at it again. Once again, treasure hunters are renewing their attempts at discovering the treasure, or at least knowledge, of what lay deep within Oak Island. Oak Island is a tiny island off the south shore of Nova Scotia. This team includes Rick Lagina and legendary Oak Island explorer Dan Blankenship, among others. This July, the team used a device commonly used by archaeologists and mining companies to map underground structures. This method is known as electrical resistivity tomography, try saying that five times in a row, or ERT, and is closely related to the medical imaging technique electrical impedance tomography, or EIT. ERT pulses high voltage current through the soil and uses electrodes at the surface or in boreholes to measure for any anomalies. Lagina's plan was to pinpoint any areas that are electrically out of the ordinary from their surroundings. A few weeks ago, the team received the results from the data they collected, and Lagina has said, there are interesting anomalies, yes, and later added, there are more than several sites that we are very excited about. Oak Island has a reputation for thwarting would-be explorers, and this most recent attempt was no exception. A truck engine blew, tools went missing, and the ERT device stopped working five times. When the team phoned the ERT manufacturer and explained the malfunction, the representative said, can't happen, never happened, not in the history of the instrument. This unit is incapable of shutting down. From its discovery in 1795, the rumors of what lie at the bottom of the money pit have ranged from pirate booty to the Knights of Templar treasures. I found this article at the Montreal Gazette. You can find the link for it at my blog at www.treasurebone.blogspot.com. Beyond the article, I'm going to give you a quick explanation of what Oak Island is all about. In 1795, Daniel McGinnis, a teenager, discovered a curious circular depression in the ground. He also noticed a tree standing over the depression whose branches were cut in a way which looked like it was used as a pulley. Having heard tales of pirates in the area, McGinnis decided to return with friends to help investigate. What they found was simply amazing. Two feet below the surface, they discovered a layer of flagstone, and at 10, 20, and 30 feet, they ran into layers of oak logs spanning the pit. Unable to go any further, they left and vowed to return. Eight years later, they returned, this time teamed up with the Onslow Company, and quickly made it back to the 30-foot depth and continued on to 90 feet, finding a layer of oak logs every 10 feet. Besides the oak log layers, they found a layer of charcoal at 40 feet, a layer of putty or clay at 50 feet, and a layer of coconut fibers at 60 feet. Remember now, this is Nova Scotia, Canada, far to the north. There are no coconut trees in this area. After getting beneath a layer of the oak at 90 feet, water began to seep in, and by the next day, the pit was flooded to the 33-foot level. This scenario has gone on and on, time after time, ever since the Oak Island Money Pit was first discovered and subsequently explored. The would-be explorers have found booby traps, hints of treasure, inscribed stones, gold chain links, and cloth with mysterious writing. Yet, as of today, nobody has been able to discover the elusive truth about Oak Island's rumored money pit and the treasure within. Well, that's all I've got. As always, take care and happy hunting. Bye.